All right, well, as you may have known, our old tent got destroyed in South Dakota. Uh, it was a REI Base Camp 6, and um, I have a I have a REI Half Dome 2 person and a Half Dome 4 person, and I, I've become a big fan of REI tents. So we uh, were kind of on the lookout for another Base Camp, and uh, we weren't real happy with the size of the poles, and um, we were at a used consignment store for gear um, in downtown Chattanooga and, and found this Kingdom 6, uh, which is a slightly more luxurious six-man tent than the base camp. And um, it was really reasonably priced, 200 bucks. And then it also came with uh, this section here, which is called a mudroom for 40 bucks. So I feel like we got a really good deal. I'd paid 190 for the base camp um, on eBay and uh, I think plus shipping. And this is a more expensive tent. And the condition was, I mean, we got to inspect it all before we bought it. Condition was really, really clean. It, like when you look down here at the parts that normally get staked down, I mean, it, it looked like they'd never even used it. They must have used it once, but maybe just once. Anyway, so I'll tell you my initial thoughts on the tent. Um, and if you're in the market for one, you know, maybe it's helpful. I think this is the newer Kingdom. They had two generations. I'm pretty sure this is the newer one, but don't quote me. I'm going to try and look into that and check it and I'll, I'll put it in the comments. So anyway, on the one side, you have a vestibule. Um, unlike a central door like we had on the base camp six, it has uh, a door on this side and then a matching door on the other side. So basically this darker gray triangle is, is always staked down and it's always there. Um, they have clips. This is one criticism I have is like clips like this, they, they never seem to stay, um, they never seem to stay latched properly. I'll give you another example of that a little later. And like the elastic for me just seems like it's already too long. And of course it's only gonna stretch out because when you actually clip it, it's still not that tight. I don't really understand why manufacturers do that, but they do. Um, yeah, inside, you have 10 total pockets, five here, and then four more times throughout the tent. Um, the door pocket is nice. So one thing that's cool about the door is that um, the hinge is not on the side, so it doesn't drape and fall and get wet. The hinge is on the top. So you could just leave it like this if you're just, you know, packing or unpacking or whatever. You can also pull it up and stuff it in the door. Um, I think that's an improvement over the base camp, which has a the hinge on the side. And then... Um, this also has a window, so the base camp has full mesh. This has um, half mesh with the window. So this also has a divider, so you can have a kid side and an adult side. Uh, this is one of the things I just don't understand. Manufacturers don't, don't seem to like try out. So they've thought this through. They give you a little loop here at the bottom uh, for you to clip these things, but like, they almost immediately, I mean, we just with a small amount of use, these things unclip. Um, basically, you pull it up, and then as you drop it, it slips out. So I just don't understand why they don't put a little more thought, um, use either more tension, or they use a different style clip. We had a, a, pro a problem. I mean, it's a first world problem. We had a small problem like that on the base camp as well. Um, and we actually solved it by slightly modifying Oh, there's a wasp in here. We did it by slightly modifying the clips. Um, basically, you could flip, you could basically flip the clip around and then it would hold more tension. Anyway, so on this side, you have full mesh, full mesh, but on this side, it's no mesh. So the two sides are not identical. The rain fly is reversible, so you can choose where this vestibule goes. And um, because I have the mudroom on, you can't see it, but basically, with with if you just buy the kingdom tent the rainfly has a vestibule on this side and on the other side it has nothing so there's literally no coverage so the only coverage you have during the rain is literally this vent so basically or not vent this window so basically on the other side rain hits right here so um again we got really lucky to find this uh mud room so i'll show you i guess i'll go the other way since there's a wasp over there. I don't know if he's aggravated or not. So, now, the mudroom was on consignment 
with a different Kingdom tent than it already sold. And that the person who bought that Kingdom tent didn't want the mudroom. So I don't know for 100% certainty that this mudroom is for this model. I'm pretty sure it is because you have this sort of green and brown um, color scheme. And here you also have this green and brown color scheme. And uh, in the other kingdom, you have like a blue and orange color scheme, but I couldn't verify it for certain. And when I looked at the instructions for this, it looks like this mudroom also attaches to the kingdom eight. So it's, I think it's a little bit kind of like a universal fit, but anyway, the mudroom gets you basically from here to there. Um, setup was a bit odd. I still haven't quite figured out what, what they want you to do with this. Um, basically, if you try and stake this out, it, it just, it doesn't work that well. But if you unzip this and you leave it unzipped, then you do need to stake it and then it works well. So I got to play with that a little bit, but let me just show you how it unzips. Sorry about my filming. So basically it unzips like you'd expect, and then you can tie this door back. What you can also do is you can unclip this and, uh, oh, and this, and then you can tie it back here as well. So you basically have a choice of like door or door plus view, I guess, so you can see. But the mudroom is really large, much larger than the vestibule on our um, base camp six. The only thing is because you have a door here and here um, and you don't have, and this flap stays, you basically can never look straight outside the tent. So from a view perspective, that's kind of a bummer. Um, on the other hand, we try and leave the rain fly off as much as possible, and we only put it on if the weather is going to look dodgy. So, yeah, um, I think the construction is great. It's as high of quality. If, I mean, it's the same quality of, and of the Base Camp 6 and the materials. Um, the poles are fine. These, uh, this pole system, uh, you have to look out. You have this hub. They made this out of solid aluminum, and they made them out of plastic. And I read that people have had problems with the plastic. That was also one of the reasons we decided to buy it because I was able to inspect that. The pole, the main pole structure is significantly beefier than the Base Camp 6, which is a complaint from a lot of people and was a complaint from us because they were always bending. And I think that this tent would have also gone down in that storm in South Dakota, um, but the Base Camp 6 definitely would have because of the poles. Yeah, last thing I was going to mention, um, I do like guidelines. I like using them. What I don't like is trying to organize them. I've used rubber bands. I've wrapped them around my finger and tied them off like you would mountain climbing rope. Um, but I just had a new idea. You can um, buy these little Velcro, uh, you can ro buy, buy a roll of like 50 of these for five bucks. I've been using them for almost 20 years. Um, you can get them from Home Depot and I'm sure you can also get them from Amazon. So I just put one of those through this green part that stays on the tent like that. And then that way, when we get to camp, we just undo that. I'm gonna trim this, we undo it. But if you don't keep those bundled somehow, pulling out your tent is an absolute nightmare. And I'm really good with knots and I know how to bundle them up tight like this, um, but my wife's not, and, and this is just handier. So the Rainfly has an interesting attachment method. Um, I've not owned a tent like this before, but I like it. I like that you don't have to go digging in and um, put it on the underside of that. So let's see, what else can I say? It comes with a backpack style carrying bag, which is exactly what we had on the Base Camp 6. Ironically, uh, the stitching here is failing, which also failed on the Base Camp 6. So it's a little lessons learned for REI. Um, yeah, what else can I say that might be helpful to somebody? Um, yeah, one thing I would say is the Base Camp 6 basically has a diagonal pole setup. So you basically put a pole in like this to that corner and this to that corner. And when you do that, it's quite stable. You don't really need to even stake it. Uh, and many times we didn't stake it. This has basically a ridge pole and then like these three hoops. And even after all, even after all the tent poles were in, the whole thing still could basically accordion in on itself and fall. So obviously you should stake a tent and all of that. But um, when you're setting it up on your own, that was a little fiddly. It was also the first time I ever set it up, so no uh, real strong criticism there. So yeah, Base Camp 6, excuse me, Kingdom 6 um, with the add-on mudroom. That's what it looks like, and if you're looking around for one of these, I hope it helps you a little bit. Take care.